So uh, good morning. I'm Ted Weatherford, and uh, I'm with Marvell Semiconductor. And Marvell Semiconductor um, manufactures um, ARM processors and networking components and all kinds of things, everything from LED light bulbs all the way to uh, the infrastructure for mobile communications, like base stations, and of course, cloud computing, because we have storage controllers. Um, we're, I think, 60% of the storage controller market in hard drives rotating media, we have solid state uh, controllers, and then we have ARM processors for compute, uh, for mobile type uh, applications, gaming applications, and of course uh, compute uh, workloads like uh, you find in the cloud. And we also have been doing Ethernet uh, for many, many years as well. So we have three of the principal technologies that make up the cloud, the networking, the storage, and the compute. And today what I'm gonna do is take you through um, some of our uh, successes we've had in uh, revolutionizing um, the cost, both in terms of equipment cost or capital equipment cost, and also um, the uh, total cost of ownership through operational costs uh, by moving to low power um, uh, application specific type processing. You can save uh, a lot of power and a, a lot gain a lot of efficiency. So I'll start with some vision, and the vision is that we are in the Milky Way here. And the world is becoming a supercomputer. And a supercomputer is comprised of three elements, storage, networking, and compute. This won't change. This has been the same since uh, the birth of the computer. Uh, and when it comes to these three things, you're going to want to balance them. This is um, our approach. So the kind of networking I.O., the compute resource, and the storage resource is balanced. When we look at what is traditionally going on uh, in an x86-based approach to compute and storage and networking, you have very, very, very high, high-performance compute, so you won't have an isosceles triangle here. You'll have a networking resource, a storage resource, whether it's DRAM or other, and you'll have lots and lots of compute. And what happens when you are out of balance like that is you have your compute resource, your CPU, sitting around not doing any work. So when you hear about Wimpy Core or Scale Out, ARM processors, and you wonder, well, why is there anything different out there using mobile processors or something to do compute against the x86 or Intel or AMD world? The answer is balance. This is the inside story. We just don't have too much compute, so therefore our compute resource is busy all the time. There's no bottleneck from the network. There's no bottleneck from storage back and forth to the processor because we bring the compute down. So this means that our chips are 5 or 10 watts, okay, and the networking interfaces are fully utilized. They're never idle. The storage interface is fully utilized, never idle, and the compute resource is fully utilized, never idle. This, no matter who you talk to on this revolution of, of low power and, and what people are saying, the ARM revolution, it's really just simple. We've just balanced the amount of compute with networking and storage. So you may wonder, well, why doesn't Intel and AMD just do that? And that's exactly what they are doing. <laughs> so we started this revolution, uh, and of course uh, they're responding so that, uh, so that everybody can, can approach this new what we call scale out or, or wimpy core approach. And Intel's done this with their Atom product. So I think the, the way to see the rest of my presentation is we're going to apply balance to the cloud, and in doing that, we're not going to have any of the three principal resources ever idle. Now, what I see happening, and I call it the arms race, uh, is that there are really two compute architectures. There's x86 coming down, uh, reducing its performance on purpose to balance. There's ARM going up in performance, and they are set to collide. <laughs> and the other architectures, PowerPC, MIPS, and there are other architectures, have fallen now by the wayside in terms of volume. There's more ARM cores sold on the planet due to mobile devices than there are x86 cores. So the, the, the most popular compute architecture in the world is ARM, and it's driven by the mobile. 94% uh, of all mobile devices are, are ARM processors. So you really do have this sort of maturation of the computer. The maturation of the computer is really coming down to these two architectures. And I believe these two architectures, x86 and ARM, will prevail for, 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 for really all time. 
So this is my kind of funny diagram to introduce you know, what I think happens. The atom is the low, the low end of the intel. The xenon is the high end. ARM is coming up. And we're number one in enterprise ARM. Uh, we sold a billion ARM cores last year. Um, Qualcomm and us are the two leaders in producing ARM-based semiconductor products. Qualcomm does cell phones and tablets and these things. Uh, so do we, but we are the first to actually take the ARM and say, hey, let's apply that to enterprise computing or cloud computing. So I think it ends, again, with an Intel Marvell picture long term. So I want to introduce what I call, and this is the end of my vision, is era of efficiency. I think we can all understand this because it's really starting to happen. The cost of energy is rising, and we see it rising pretty much without bound. Um, slow and steady, but rising. And what I've drawn here is I've said, hey, nature is going to reward only the most efficient. Anything or any uh, human system, whether it's social engineering, it needs to be hyper-efficient or it'll be naturally pruned. And I'm showing water droplets here, which when they drop, naturally take on the shape of what I have. This is an Air Force drop tank from the 50s, which is what you put gasoline in for planes. And so nature wins is my message. And nature is balanced and nature is efficient. And if you apply these systems to cloud computing and data centers, then you'll have the most scalability possible for the same amount of energy that you put in. So what we know in trends is that it's, it's crazy. 5% of all the electricity in the United States is now consumed by data centers, both private and public data centers. This is profound if you think about it, right? <laughs> you think about all those high tension wires that you see and 5% of them are going right into computers. And you know, artificial intelligence is here, right? Our whole trading system, our flash trading on Wall Street are two computer programs that are adaptive. They're writing their own code and they're attacking each other and, and the output is game theory for money, right? So what we have is we have this intense curve. We don't know what it looks like, but we know that it's ramping. And we know that the real bottleneck is not our desire to compute or applications to compute. We know that the problem is actually the power itself. And so this is the impetus and this is what's driving this revolution for more balanced uh, and I believe ARM-based cores for compute. So I want to uh, focus on the public cloud. At Marvell, we say there's a home cloud. There's, uh, there's a mobile cloud, there's a private cloud, and there's a public cloud. I want to focus on public cloud and sort of tell you how I think that fits in. You know, of course, you've got your home and your residential, you've got your small business, you have your traditional enterprise. We, sometimes we call that private cloud. And you have some sort of internet connection which is going, you know, which is traditional. So it's fiber or it's copper, uh, DSL uh, or, or PON or traditional, traditional pots and, and stuff. And, and then you have, of course, all these mobile devices. And they're connected also to now this public cloud concept of this data center. And what is this? Well, this is a natural shift. This is a natural shift of things being stored locally or on the edges um, and, and computing that's stationary going mobile. So, so, so storage at the edge, like in your home or in your physical device or at your laptop, is, is migrating towards this center shared resource. And if you think about it, what is a shared resource? It's efficient. So we're naturally waxing and waning now where we're waning towards centralization. That's what the cloud is. It's taking everything where we can share the resource. And what, and what we know about the cloud is that we can scale it up and down dynamically based on our needs. In fact, we could even rent or temporarily use those resources. And so it's very elastic and it, it actually matches our elastic economics model very, very well, supply and demand very well. So this is what's happening. And Marvell is number one in rotating media and storage. Um, and so we see where are we selling our hard drives? We're going to sell our hard drives in the cloud. <laughs> where are the highest value transistors going to be toggling doing work in the cloud? So it's shareable, it's scalable, it's practically unlimited because of that, that elasticity. And of course, since we're all putting efficient processors in there, efficient storage and efficient networking, now we're going to, the total cost of ownership for, for, for everybody is lowest, right? And this, is, this trend is unstoppable because it's driven, I believe, by nature saying it's time to be efficient. If you want infinite compute, you want infinite storage, you want infinite connections between everything, you're going to have to start centralizing them and sharing them. 
Um, there's another trend to point out that's driving this, this, this whole cloud, and that is structured data going to unstructured data. That's what this graph shows. The structured data is in blue, and the unstructured data is in this ugly yellow. And what you see is the unstructured data is just coming up. Well, what's unstructured data? That's the way the common person uses storage. I have an audio file. I drag it to a folder. I have a document. I store it on my hard drive. I don't think about, it's not a database that's structured that I'm inputting. I don't have a report input form to say, okay, it's music, so it goes here, and then it's all categorized. It's very random. It's very unstructured. And we have to understand that this trend profoundly affects um, the, the, the kind of storage that we're doing, the kind of compute, the workloads that we have. All of a sudden, things like Google and search engines and these kind of things uh, are, are looking at the unstructured data and being able to find it and mine it. So, so this is a trend that I don't know if it's good or bad. Sometimes I think it's bad. It means we're all just storing tons of stuff and we don't know where it is. But the reality is it's upon us. And when we look at this, what you really need is all these little processors that have really good storage pipes. They're networked very, very efficiently and they just have enough compute to store this kind of capability. You also need super powerful computers to search and find all that data. Where we're focused in, in my company is definitely reducing the amount of processing, increasing the amount of networking, increasing the amount of storage. So processing comes down and the networking and the storage is balanced. And this is to try absolutely to match with this demand coming out of nowhere. <clears throat> so, where do all of the costs come from the data center? This is a, a, a study um, that, that we did where we basically look at, okay, for a standard data center the way it's constructed today, where are the costs, right? So the actual server itself is very expensive. Um, the system power is 11% of the cost. The cooling power is another 11. So the, the power to cool and the power to power the system are the, are the same. That's very interesting, right? And I don't know if you've ever been in a data center, but they're very loud. They're like, and it's cold, you know? And it's just row after row of boxes, right? 19-inch telco boxes. And then the space, look at this. The space is 18%. This is 11, sorry about the font, 11. That's 22% of the cost is the power and the compute, uh, sorry, the cooling, and almost the same amount as the real estate. This is a U.S. model, so it depends where you are in the U.S., but this is U.S. model. And then actually the server itself, they're constantly swapping them out, uh, and it's expensive, right? So if you can get the total cost of the actual uh, server space and real estate and everything down, that's the biggest chunk, but power is substantial. Let's just say it's 22%. So if you can save a fifth, the, you know, if your processor does the same work for a fifth the power, and that's, that's what our exact product we have out now is, it's one fifth the power, you're taking, you know, 5% of the overall cost out just off the top by that processor out. Um, good, that's pretty much the summary. Um, this is what I think is evolving, this is what I'm witnessing. You had discrete processing, uh, and then you went to a virtualization model. Uh, that's um, very, very important, especially how it ties in um, uh, with Oracle. Uh, you know, this is what people do today. They have one process. This is a processor with a colored workload. Processor with a colored workload. Over here, we're saying, hey, there's more processing per processor, and we're going to do multiple operating systems, right? We're going to virtualize. What I think's coming is a completely different approach where you have very, very small processors with balanced processing, network, and storage, and you just have many, many more times, right? Now, these can also be virtualized, okay? So it can get crazy. You can actually, there's actually kind of a fourth evolution where now these little processors may virtualize. They may not virtualize, you know, five, 10, 20, 30 times. They may virtualize once or twice. Um, but the point is, is that they already are busy all the time. The reason that you virtualize is that you have a processor that's so powerful it's sitting around doing nothing. And if it's going to do nothing, you go ahead and you have other, other contexts and other virtualization to get the efficiency up, getting all the resources working. As you bring the processing down in balance with the networking and the storage, you get into a model, a model like this. And I'll show you some density because the other piece that we haven't talked about is if you make these processors small, they don't need big heat sinks. They don't need big power supplies. You can get a lot more of them in the same physical, physical area. And remember, 
you know, the, the floor space itself, you know, sp you know, space and management, 18%. So you, you, you have a lot to be gained. You want to fully use your real estate. Um, this is just summarizing what I'm saying. The, the old world has got giant, giant high performance processors. What you really want is performance per dollar, performance per watt, and performance per, per area. And so we call this the performance trap. Uh, because when we look into cars and we look into everything, we're always looking for performance, performance, performance. How fast can you go zero to 60? You know, how many, uh, how many uh, DMIPs can I do, you know, uh, not per watt, but just total in a chip or in a server? And this isn't really the story. It's, you need this ratio. Efficiency is not sexy. It's not fun to think about. It, it, it just ends up winning. It just ends up being the most important thing in the end. So what we need is we need the performance per dollar because that's one measure of efficiency. We need performance per watt, which is also converts to dollars because power is the real bottleneck. And then you have performance per inch, which is very, very important and, and is actually, to be honest, it's just driven by Moore's law. We get a certain amount of transistors per year. Um, so this is what I want to point out just to final, uh, point, start introducing some workloads, right? It, it's like we believe that, that this product we've built, which we call the Armada XP, we, we believe that it's perfect for Hadoop type structures, for memory caching, because your memory is always, always, always busy. You don't have any idle. Um, and big data uh, analytics and mobile analytics, and of course, web front end. In fact, one of the, the, one of the things that we've done, and I'll, I think it's right here, yeah. <clears throat> this is an example of an ARM-based server. So you have a seven foot telco rack with 19 inches of usable space. You can fit 12 of these systems in this box, and you can get 12 blades. And every blade has one, two, three, four of our processors on it, and four hard drives, okay? Um, this shows an example of one of the chips, and each chip has A, B, C, or four processors, okay? So you can jam just literally thousands of these cores in a seven-foot rack as, composed to, uh, as, as compared to the traditional type compute where the processor is very powerful and there's less of them. What this means is the total amount of IOPS on hard drives or IOPS on networking goes up. It means that you have more I.O. happening and you have more processors, but each one is not as powerful. So if you think about how many hard drives you get in here with four per blade, 12 per, and how many actual cores, um, it's, it's, very, it's many times more, maybe 10 times uh, more processors, uh, and it's five times the total performance for, in this particular example, PHP session, so web front end. So if you run Apache on this, our, our claim is that you have a 20, 20 cents per month GoDaddy. I don't know if you know GoDaddy.com, but it's, this is basically, it takes the 79 cent, 80 cent GoDaddy model and brings it right down to, to, to 20, you know, 5 cents to 20 cents a month, depending on how much storage. Also, what you notice is this whole board right here is, is 45 watts. And, and you know, the hard drives themselves actually end up, end up burning almost the same amount of power. So you're, you're really bringing and balancing the amount of power per processor per network to the, to the hard drive. Now we also, I'll show you some, these are just so you can see some more pictures and how they plug in. Um, here is a really, this is the latest one. This is that same board, better, better picture, um, but now we've put solid state memory. And so now you have a very you have, you have performance now where the IOP operations for the storage complex are a thousand times faster than the hard drive version. So your storage goes down quite a bit, you know, you know four terabytes or so, um, whereas you know the other one is a little bit uh, a little bit more than that max. But you have ridiculous performance, and now you get into transactional servers. Um, and if you want to do something like uh, manage and handle the kind of uh, requests and grants that you get out of a Twitter or, or some large social network, now this is where we're going to come in. In fact, what we learned is we've got to up, uh, upgrade the card now to 10, 10 gig to fully keep up with the IOP. So, so this, is, this is a state-of-the-art example of a super, super low power, super high performance ARM, ARM blade computer. And that's the first ARM blade computer uh, that in the world, by the way. Um, nobody else has ARM for Enterprise that's in mass production yet except for us. We expect to have around six competitors uh, by Q2 next year. So you're going to see a large, large increase in, in that. 
Um, this is another example of an ARM-based server. It's actually just this section here. Um, these are all hot swappable paddles that can put in either solid state, hard drive, or, or ARM processors. This is an example of a very, very small card. It's about that big. And that shows our ARM, our symmetric multiple ARM processor, and we're putting the DRAMs directly on the board. The reason you do this is these can now become little paddles in, in a very, very dense compute. So I'll give you an example. An x86 blade looks like this, and you can see the DRAMs here, and um, you can see the actual processor here and the cooling. Uh, this is an example of taking the blades I showed you from before and jamming them in. You can, you can get, we, we calculate we can get 6,000 arm cores in a, um, in a seven foot rack um, with this. What do you see in the uh, performance of the memory on Intel versus the Marvell on the uh, chip itself? Oh, that's a, that's, a great, that's a great point. The chip we have out now that, that we can talk about uh, is a 32-bit or 64-bit interface, and it'll run it at 16... 800 double clocked, you know, so 1600. And, uh, and the clock speed of the processors, there's four of them on the die, is, is 1.6 gigs, so it matches nicely. Um, so, and, and our DRAM IP that we're talking about now is, is 1600. This is a this is a this particular product is called the Armada XP, and it, it is it is really the first ARM implementation of an enterprise class uh, product. So you have everything from you know all the ECC protections. Um, we'll sell them an ITIM, all kinds of things that you traditionally wouldn't bother with, right? Um, and the bus structures inside the chip are very fast. Uh, the the number of certies we have, we have PC, uh, four PCIe controllers that are by eight. Um, I think it can do, uh, you know, this chip's like 5, 8 watts, but it can do 10 gig of throughput. There's a full layer 2, layer 3 Ethernet acceleration and load balancing. So, yeah, very, very, it's a server on a chip, literally everything. This is another example of uh, the first, this is, I believe, the first commercially available one RU server. They say that 80% of, of, uh, of all data centers are still one RU servers probably because the low barrier to entry. Uh, and this particular shows this uh, module, very similar to the one I showed you before, but different. And they've plugged these modules into this board. So depending on how much horsepower you want, uh, you plug in more boards. Um, and again, yeah, that's available, available now. This is, um, this is the most exciting thing I can show you today. And I think this is going to change the world. What this is, is this, is this is a product that we worked with a Taiwanese manufacturer called WinWin. And it's the densest storage appliance in the world. And the way it became dense is we didn't have to allocate power or board area to larger, more complex processors. So the amount of integration that we had with our own storage controller IP, our own networking IP, and our processor allowed us to build this very, very small board. This board's about this big in real, in real life. And these are five and a quarter drives. So you have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've taken this shelf out and put it on the top so you can see it. But you have 24 five and a quarter hard drives in a two RU form factor. And on the back, you can't see it, but the back is our networking, and we have uh, dual 10 gig networking. This box is exciting for us because we own 100% of the silicon, and 100% of the silicon is mass, in mass production. That means that you can generate these in very, 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 very high volumes right now. And this is exactly designed for what we call big data or cold storage um, for uh, unstructured data. And um, all these are hot swappable. There's redundancy on the power supply. And we, we have our, our what we call programmable Ethernet in the back so that we can actually program any forwarding plane paradigm for any networking as long as it's Ethernet standard out. So this is exciting. And I, this whole 2RU is only 300 watts. And I'll tell you how this started. I was, you know, I was in China. And I was at a, a public cloud customer. <clears throat> and I walk into their data center. And their racks are only full this high. <laughs> so you walk into a data center in the US, it's loud and it's noisy. And, but I walk in and it's just the racks are empty. And I'm like, oh, OK, you're, 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 still, you're still building everything. And why you're building it all at the same time, I couldn't figure it out. And they're like, no, 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 we only have 
2.7 to 3.3 kilowatts per, per tile. And this is all we can put in. And I'm like, well, I can fix that, right? And so a year later, and that's a couple months ago, uh, we, we brought them these. We sold them 80,000 of these. <laughs> and now you can fill the rack. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting stuff. So it's somewhere around a 2x of what's about to come out with the x86 based uh, storage appliance. Um, Anyway, I can't, I can't say enough about this because it's so, I'm so proud to be at a semiconductor company that owns all the silicon because it's a big deal. And, and, and Marvell started this whole process way before I joined, but it's exciting because wherever we sell these, none of my competitors will even know there's something happening because the hard drive people are our best friends because we're number one in hard drive controllers and nothing else shows up. <laughs> Typically in semiconductors, we can tell what each other are doing because we'll get a design one on the board and then we'll know what the volume is. This is literally off the radar. Anywhere we sell these, my competitors will never even know it's happening. Um, we are in a long-term relationship with Ubuntu. Um, we just signed up for what's called long-term support for five years. So we have a mature operating system that is enterprise class. And this is also the first, um, you know, this is, you can run the same operating system on x86 products, of course, as well. But this is a really big accomplishment because it really means you can build a system that's enterprise or carrier class. Um, the software ecosystem's the most important thing. I, I'm a hardware person, so I've been focusing on that, but it's the most important thing. And I, and I just want to say, you can run Oracle Java right now on our products, and we're entering into a partnership um, right now where we're, we're doing certain optimizations for certain wor workloads. Um, we haven't decided all the workloads, but, they're, but we're likely to look at uh, optimizing for, for Hadoop together. Um, and that I'm, I'm, that's at an advanced stage, and I'm confident that we'll go forward together. I mean, Oracle's the best. And uh, also the canonical I just mentioned, uh, and Red Hat now is also moving too. So Red Hat actually, as of two weeks ago, has like 40 of my servers, and they've got uh, Fedora on it, and Fedora is the same actually as Red Hat. Red Hat, the difference is the support level. So I expect this time next year I'll have Red Hat on our products as well. Uh, say again? Um, oh, this is, this is soft. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, to, uh, to be really candid with you, and I always would be, I mean, we're birthing a market, right? I mean, there's been an x86 lock for decades. And to, in order to do that, one company can't do that. I mean, Marvell's amazing. 7,000 people, 3.4 billion, blah, blah, blah. You know, doing ARM for 13 years, billion cores sold a year. That's, you know, that's, a, that's one boat of many. That's why we use the word Armada. It's not just Armada of our products. We're looking for a whole ecosystem of ARM players that are going to become enterprise class. And you can look for announcements. I'm, I mean, I'm proud to say that Cavium is going to jump in. They've moved away from MIPS. Uh, Freescale's got, got, uh, got, I mean, everybody's moving now. Uh, to arm. So we're getting this armada together to hopefully, again, just balance out the market. And I believe, yeah, I believe deeply in balance. Um, uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, we, we, Lenaro is another one that you'll see from, with us quick too. I, I don't know if you know, but Lenaro is, is providing a service for enterprise uh, and ARM saying, hey, there'll be all these different ARM players. Um, we're going to make sure that there can be one distribution for the Canonicals and the Red Hats at least. Um, it, with Canonical, uh, I, you will see us optimizing for our specific hardware. You will, you'll see that first because they were our first partner. Um, so I wanted to summarize by, by saying, you know, I mean, I am here to say there is an ARM revolution. I am here to say Marvell's leading it. Um, this isn't speculation. We just happen to be the first out in production. And why you can, you can look to us and say, hey, that, that company's got it together is this real trinity that we have. You know, we have third generation network processors and traffic managers, which are what you need for load balancing these data centers. We have fifth generation uh, ARM core, second generation symmetric ARM core. We have the fastest clock speeds of ARM. We build our own um, ARM cores that are instruction set compatible. So we're able to outperform the standard ARM offering. We actually do both, but every generation we decide. Uh, and then we also have seventh going to eighth generation Q1 extra Ethernet, which is you know, very, very exciting in terms of, of, of most of the interconnect. And then 10th generation storage control is a number one in storage. So um, you know, with that, I wanted to try to just have some dialogue with you guys about what you're interested in and 
I'm on the front lines trying to make this all happen. Is there anything uh, I can explore or answer with you? So you're talking about a story. Do you yeah. have something like a scale down? You know, I'm, I'm very new to this. Like yeah, sure. Uh -huh. uh, do you have any kind of like a, to use for a formal smoking? Not just like we do. Big, big enterprise. I, I like the cost would be like, a, you know, $500 or something. Very much. Yeah, we, we, we're actually, my same business unit, I, I'm just, I was pitching more of the enterprise class stuff today, is number one in, in network attached storage in general. So yeah, we have single core uh, processors that are in the NAS. We have 42, 43% of the NAS market. Almost any NAS you buy uh, is going to probably have, have our, our product in it, yeah. So, and the answer is they range from $200 up to 1000 Like you can get a, for 1000 it's it's a nicer one, right? Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, you'll get it's it's really uh, us, um, Motorola or Freescale, us Freescale, and uh, um, I'm trying to think of the other one. The um, yeah, yeah, TI, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. If you ever want to get um, a whole, if you just want to get a single board computer with these kind of products on it, you can just email me, I'll send you a couple. Yeah, because I mean, the amount of processing per dollar and per watt that we're offering these things, it's, 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 uh, it's really exciting if you're an embedded designer. I was an embedded designer for many years. It's, so there are a couple single board computers out there. One of them is by a little company in Maine called Cogent, and then uh, there's also a German company. Um, I'm trying to think the name of them right off, but there, you can start to get these now. I mean, there's tons of ARMs out there you can program, but if you really want to get you know two, giger, uh, two gigahertz and this kind of stuff and all this fancy networking all on the same chip, we're, we're kind of the only game in town right now. What, what else? Anything else interesting? Do you know why, you, why, why did you come? Do you, was there something you wanted to specifically know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can, I can, I can give it to you. I'm real careful, you know. Just, I just, I, who knows where the slides go, but uh, twenty-five thousand five hundred DMIPS in a twelve-watt envelope is is one is one is is the when we turn turn the clock up that's that's yeah that's it so at 1.6 gig let me give you a real number if you want to write them down 1.6 gig is about nine watts and that's 1600 600 dmips so there's the numbers and that chip can range in cost it's about eighty dollars for that chip i think that's all your metrics and then if you go start looking at the the uh, the competitions that'll be exciting. I mean, this is this little product. I mean, I'm not doing a product pitch today, but it's called the Armada XP, Armada Extreme Performance. Armada comes from wanting to have a, a giant coalition of ARM products by us and others that can balance Intel. But the Armada XP uh, is in mass production and um, is uh, is is a pretty amazing product. It's the most efficient processor, the most DMIPS per watt of any chip that's ever been built by. Humankind, <laughs> actually, <laughs> and that's just half the story because that's you know there's so much more capability in there um, with the networking and everything else. It has it has it has seventh generation Ethernet networking built in, so most processors sit here, and then there's companion chips uh, that connect through PCIe and then allow you to do whatever you're going to do. And we've we've put really everything for a full enterprise class server on on a you know on a chip with the, where the die is the size of your of your fingernail. And this means things like if you're only going to, you turn the clock down, it'll burn 5 watts, 6 watts. Turn the clock up, it'll build, you know, 10 to 12 watts. You can adjust how you run them, and then you don't have these big heat sinks that are expensive. You don't have fans on top of the heat sinks, you know, you, and you can just pack, of, you know, lots and lots of them in a very small unit volume. Software-wise, um, there's a lot of, of applications that you can just run, right? Because the whole uh, open community or, or, uh, or not, but they're all available, right? So with the Ubuntu canonical OS, you, just, you can literally run whatever you want right on top of these things. We sell eval boards, too. If you want to get yourself, um, you know, this, um, I'll show, go back to this little picture here. We, we took this. 
This is a connector. We took this, disconnected this, and folded them, and we sell them in a box. So you can get a little quad core with networking, with storage, in a box as a reference system. They're not cheap because they're designed for developers. They're not designed for, for mass use. Um, if you want to just get a single chip as cheap as possible, we, we have a whole infrastructure called plug computing. It's uh, uh, theplug.org. Um, or plugcomputer.org, both those will work. And uh, we sell a whole computer with an ARM chip in it for $99 quantity one, so. Yeah, the, yeah, well there's like three generations of them now, yeah, Shiva was the, but yeah, the Shiva plug was the first, yeah. We, we do we do have an Armada XP plug now. Absolutely, absolutely. If yeah, if you have any, my email by the way is just Ted at Marvell. So if you want to follow up with me, just I got a card too if you want. <laughs> but I can help you get through any of the Marvell. Um, what do you call it? Uh, labyrinths. <laughs> if uh, you don't have any questions, that's uh, that's all I have for you. Yeah. No hurry, dude. Uh huh. Oh, you you could. Yeah, you could. Oh, uh, you could. Yeah, you could. Oh, you could. The answer is you can. So, yeah, the answer is you can do that. <laughs> Why did we specifically do this? This design is actually Dell. So, you'd have to ask them why they wanted to do it this way, right? I think the modularity. I think yeah. Uh, the, the physical interface? I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, basically you can directly hook to the phone line, then they can talk to each other. So, 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 so we, we have controllers. I don't know if you can see this, but these are the, 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 the SSD modules, and these are connected. These are controllers also by Marvell. This takes PCIe and, and actually drives it, right? So these, I think this is something we call Frey, is the code name Frey. So, I mean, that, that's... This, and this is very high performance that way. Because you have a fan out. You have a fan out, right? The, if you take one of these, each chip can drive two. But as you see, there's a lot more than two per processor. So we have a fan, like a muxing or a fanning out there. Yeah. Cool. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's super cool, huh? Where do you work? Oh, OK, great. Yeah, no problem. We're, 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 yeah, perfect. Perfect. We're we're trying to work with you right now because I want to put Hadoop on here. So yeah. I was just demoing Hadoop on an IMX6 yesterday. All right.